sketch the following function. f of x is equal to 3 times 2 to the x minus 1 power minus 4. The way I'm going to graph this, what we need to do is start with a base function, and then we're going to work our way inside out, step by step, getting a new function and new graph along the way until we get to the function we're interested in. So let's take a look. So if I strip away all the operations that are happening here, we're going to be left with the function g of x equal to 2 raised to the x power. So I want to know how to graph this first, and then the rest is just shifting and stretching. The way I graph this, the trick is you need four things. You need to know how to evaluate it on three points, and you, know, you need to know where to put the horizontal asymptote. For my three points, I always go with minus 1, 0, and 1. If we evaluate our function at these three points, a minus 1 in there just means flip it over, giving me a half. A 0, 2 to the 0 is going to be equal to 1. And then put a 1 in there, that just gives me 2 back. So I get these three points on the graph of 2 to the x. Then I need the horizontal asymptote, which is always going to be at y equals 0, we have a positive number and I raise it to the x power, we always have that positive asymptote. It might go to the left, it might go to the right, but it's always going to be at zero. So we have three points, horizontal asymptote, I connect the dots, and that gives me my function. So that's how I remember how to graph 2 to the x. Now what I want to do is think of it this way. If I want to actually get a number out of this, I'm going to have to compute a sequence of operations. So for our graphing, we're basically going to follow out them operations from the inside out. So what that would mean is, the very first thing I try to do with this mess is to first go after the 2 raised to the x minus 1 power. So if I write that in terms of g, that's going to be g of x minus 1. And the rule is going to be shift right by 1. Okay, we have a minus 1 in there. You might think that says shift left, but when it's on the inside, you do the opposite of what you think. To make that a little bit clearer, we're going to follow out our three points through this whole thing. So the idea would be this. We know what happens if I put minus 1, 0, or 1 into 2 to the x. So I want to know what numbers do I have to put in to x minus 1 to get them to come out so then I can follow this through to the points I've already computed. So I'm just saying what x gives me x minus 1 equals minus 1, 0, or 1. Well, if I solve that, I'm going to get 0, 1, and 2, which means I'm looking at points 0, 1 half, 1, 1, and 2, 2 when I look at the graph of 2 raised to the x minus 1. So these are our old points. I plot my new points. And you notice these three points here are all going to the right. So that's our first step in. Next step is going to be, what do I do? If I compute this, the next thing that happens, we multiply by a 3. This is on the outside, so it's going to affect what happens in y. So we're going to do a stretch along y. Let's take a look at what happens. So if I'm going to multiply everything by 3, well, we could take our old points. That's just going to multiply the y values by 3. And so I get this new set of points here, 3 halves, 1, 3, and 2, 6. We plot them again. And compared to what I had before, the x values are all the same. It's just we're getting the stretch upwards. Since there's nothing below the axis, the x-axis, there's nothing going to happen down there. OK. For our final step, we're just going to subtract 4 off the function. Since that's all in the outside, it's going to affect y values also. So now I'm just going to pull a 4 off of the last set of points that I graphed. And I also note, this will change the horizontal asymptote. It was at y equals 0. Since we're going down, it's going to drop to y equal to minus 4. So I'll plot the new horizontal asymptote. We plot our three points. And so we'll note, to compare graphs, we have our three points here. We drop them by four, and then they wind up right there. 
And so that's my final graph for the original function. Okay, we should check. Let's see what happens if I stick my points 0, 1, and 2 into the original function. So we just calculate. So 3 times a half minus 4 gives me my minus 2 fifths, which is what we got when we followed things through. We have 3 times 2 to the 0 minus 4. 2 to the 0 is a 1, so I get a minus 1. Agrees with the point I found from before. And then putting a 2 in gives me 3 times 2 minus 4 equals 2. And that again agrees with the point we found from before.